going on guys? Welcome to the channel. For any of you guys that watch my videos on a regular basis, you know that uh, the rear diff on my car is in need of some serious help. So I have got a new diff cover, new bolts, new bearings, new seals. I've got some gear oil, some friction modifier, and the main portion of this, the clutch packs. I went with the carbon fiber replacements. These are for inside the stock track lock differential. So these are the clutch packs and the discs that go in there to help you with traction so you can spin both tires instead of one. So we're going to go through and do this. And I will tell you now, if you've never been into a differential, <clears throat> it smells awful. So gloves are usually highly recommended for this so you don't get that nasty smell on your hands. Um, I got all these <coughs> parts off LMR. They come with nice instructions. It shows you basically a walkthrough of how to do this, which is nice. So if you're very unfamiliar with it, you can at least go through. It tells you what to do. It says what's not included, what is included. So gives you directions on how to do this. I'm going to walk through now. It's a very easy procedure. It, uh, it's really not time consuming at all. You don't have to remove the, the pumpkin or the rear diff or, you know, you, you don't have to remove the ring and pinion or the differential case or any of that stuff. So that's nice. It's very easy. And from this exploded view, you, you get an idea. So here's your carrier and then here are the clutch packs on each side the challenging part is this spring and from what I've seen the spring that comes in the um, carbon fiber kit is usually too big to go in there um, and what I mean by that is from here to here it's just too much space and you can't compress it enough to put it in between <coughs> the two uh, spider gears so typically I end up reusing the factory piece that's there um, for what it's worth. This spring is what puts outer tension on the clutch discs so that they both um, grab. So if you don't have enough tension, it can be an issue, but most times the, the differential clutch spring is just fine. Um, but we'll see. Like I said, in the other ones I've done, this, this spring has just been too big to compress. And even if you compress it all the way, it's just too much to, to fit in between there. So we might not use that. But. First things first, before I get started, um, they always recommend you soak your clutch packs in friction uh, friction modifier. So I'm going to do that. <clears throat> I always like to put it in a bag, inside of a bag, just in case it leaks. I don't get it everywhere. It smells awful. As I said, gloves are recommended, definitely. If you don't, uh, this stuff just, just smells awful. So... <clears throat> One thing I'll caution you on is if your car has been doing one wheel peel for a long time, if you've got a standard 8.8 differential, it more than likely has a track lock. Some of them are open differentials if it was in a truck or some other models. But if you do have an 8.8 .8 and you've been doing one wheel peels for a long time, there is a chance that you can wear into the cross bolt that goes in there and then make it really hard to get out. So if you do need to rebuild your diff, I would highly suggest to not beat on the car and one wheel peel for too long because those spider gears can create a groove on your cross pin and then when you take that out it's no good and you can't use it anymore so just caution there all right so we've got the gloves on first things first we're going to soak these new clutches in the friction modifier oh yeah there's that that lovely smell that you'll never forget mm, yeah take a whiff that's awful so we'll put the clutch packs inside a bag, <clears throat> throw some friction modifier on them. The other thing I found so you don't have to use so much, don't stack them so high. You want to make sure you get a, a nice coating on them. There we go. Friction modifier. Put the lid back on so we don't spill this nasty crap everywhere. And like I said, close it up. Ugh, yummy. And I always like to put it inside of another bag just so that it does not 
come out or leak or anything of that nature. All right, another tip is if you don't have enough friction modifier to completely submerge these in, um, I would just suggest let it soak on one side, let it sit for a bit, and then flip it over after a little bit just to make sure you get all sides of it coated. So, so there's that. We're going to let these sit while we do the rest of the work. <coughs> and I opted for, I know this is a cheap chinzy cover, but it's 30 bucks and it's a heck of a lot better than what I've got. Um, I didn't want to spend 150 to 200 bucks on one of the thinned covers. I just didn't want to do that. So that one's cheap. I got some new bolts with it too. Those are another 20 bucks. So for 50 bucks, I got a cover. I got new bolts, washers, and then I got the bearings. So these are the new actual shaft bearings. These go on the outer side of your uh, the outer side of your axle. <clears throat> this is what it rides on. I don't think I've ever replaced mine. So I'm going to do these today as well. Now these do require some specialty tools, so uh, I guess they don't require them, but it's easier with them. The right tool for the job makes it a heck of a lot easier. So we're going to do those bearings and also the seals that go with it. You get a new uh, cross pin retaining bolt as well. We're going to replace these seals also. And uh, I usually just use a seal puller on these. I've got a pretty inexpensive one, but the uh, the bearing the bearing and race driver set that I have, um, I would highly recommend for for doing these. So there we go. There's all the parts we're going to use. We're going to get started by jacking the carp in the air, and then uh, removing the diff cover and inspecting everything. I was uh, I always like to inspect the cross pin, which will be that, your, no, that's your pinion shaft. Yeah, there's your pinion shaft right there. I guess that's what they're calling it, but the cross pin that goes through the carrier to hold the spider gears in. I like to inspect it, so I remove it first. And I make sure that there's no grooves or wear marks on it before I get all heavy into trying to do this whole install. So I'm going to open up the rear differential first. As long as everything looks good, the cross pin comes out good. Then I'll take the tires off so I can get the C-clips out and all of that, all of that jazz. So let's get started. The thing that I like to do when I get the car up in the air, I put the jack stands right up underneath the frame rail and then I let the car or I let the uh, axle down. If you put the jack stands underneath the axle, you don't get as much drop and it's really hard to get um, in there to the differential. So you can see what I mean. Um, I've got my jack stands right there underneath the rear axle, or not the rear axle. I've got my jack stands underneath the frame rail, both sides. And then when I let the, the rear axle down, it drops it down enough to where you don't have to work in between the gas tank and the differential. Always make sure you let it down slow. There's no reason to just drop it. And once the uh, suspension fully extends, you'll be able to see. There we go. One thing that I do like to do <clears throat> when I get to this point is I will find where the car is happy at, and then I will put a auxiliary set of jack stands underneath the rear axle just to make sure if the car does roll forward, it's not gonna. It's not going to fall down and crush you. It's just good reassurance. And I do have the front wheel chalked so that it, the car can't roll that easily, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Like I said, for this part, I just like to find a, another set of jack stands. Put them under the rear axle for support. And then I will jack the rear axle up a little bit. Thank you. 
that way the full weight of the suspension is not just hanging off the back end of the car. It kind of supports a little bit of that weight. There we go. So now the rear axle is supported by these jack stands, but the weight of the car is supported by the jack stands up front. Then you've got the wheels chalked. Just give yourself some good safety. So now you can see easy access to the diff cover. So we'll be able to take these bolts out. We'll be able to pop the, the cover off. And then we'll be able to check the cross pin. We'll be able to make sure that it's in good guys, shape. I haven't caught the uh, install video of my Ryobi garage door opener. I love this thing. And also my hack for adding extra accessories. Instead I've got four ports on it and uh, another one up there. guys so I'm gonna tell you right now this is a nasty job so wear your safety glasses cover your hands make sure you don't get any of this gunk on you it's not a very pleasant smelling experience and I would hate to get it in my eye so so I've got all the bolts out with the exception of one and I like to leave that one bolt in just so that if the cover does break loose really easily it doesn't fall off so this is where you gotta kind of pry the sucker open Ugh, and there is that smell. That seal also determines how difficult it is to pop the cover. I always prefer silicone just because it's easier to clean up. Those paper gaskets, in my opinion, are just a giant pain in the butt. And I hate them, so I don't use them. So the cleanup on this is a heck of a lot easier than if you had that paper stuff. And then you got to worry about getting all that paper shavings and crap into, into your diff. So you got to... Yeah, it's just a lot easier if you use the silicone, in my opinion. The cleanup would be super slick. I'll go over with a razor blade, get uh, get it all cleaned up, and then I'll put it back together with more black silicone and call it good. So now, now is where we will be looking to see if we can find where. So this is your cross pin, and this is the bolt that holds the cross pin in. So the first thing we're going to do is take that cross pin bolt out and see how easily our cross pin comes out. Um, since I race my car quite often, um, I want to make sure that 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 pin is reusable because if it's not, it doesn't come in the kit and you have to get a new one. So taking it all apart is going to make it so your car is down for a longer period of time. So that's the first thing we'll do. One thing I just noticed as I was working on this, and it is that these bolts that hold the diff cover on. I just noticed that uh, the ones I have are substantially longer than this, so I'm not sure they're going to work. So I'm going to have to check that. So it's an eight millimeter, uh, it's an eight millimeter bolt here. And I've got a couple of wrenches because I don't know how good this one is. There we go. That came free pretty good. That cross pin bolt it's only supposed to be about 20 foot-pounds or so. It's not going to be terrible to get off. If it is, I mean, somebody put it on there with way too much tension. So, so your cross pin bolt comes out. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so that's all you want to make sure of. So mine slid really easy. Um, it, it slid in. You can see I barely tapped on it. You can see that it, it slid in good already. So that's a good sign. I'm gonna reach in from the back side. Get that cross pin out, there we go. Good deal. So you might be able to see a little bit. Yeah, so you can see right there, there's some wear on my cross pin. If, if you go a really long time, and this is probably only something that happens if you do crazy major burnouts, but if you go a long period of time with your yours worn out and you're doing burnouts and it's spinning one tire, you'll get excess of wear on this edge. 
and that can also cause the uh, the spider gears to bind up in there. So it's good. We're not too bad. That's actually a lot better than I expected. So I'm happy about that. And then we will use the uh, the new cross pin um, retainer bolt because it's got Loctite on it. This one does not. You can always put some on it, but it's always good practice to use a new one. We'll save on save that cross pin for later. <clears throat> so now, now that we know that that, uh, that cross pin's good, we're going to go ahead and proceed with the project. We're going to get both of the wheels off so that we can push the axles in and then take the C-clips out. And I could probably do it without... Uh, I could probably do it without taking the wheels off, but it's just easier to push on the axle with the wheel off, so I prefer to take the wheel off to each their own. Wheel off to actually access the axle, you can see right here, we will have to remove the caliper and the caliper bracket. That way we can get the, uh, the disc and the axle out. Now, if you're doing this on a drum, um, a drum application, there's more hardware inside of the drum that you have to replace. So you have to remove the wheel, you got to release your e-brake, then you have to pull the drum off, and there's the innards of the drum, the shoes and all the springs and retainers you got to take off. And there's a backing plate, that comes out, and then you'll be able to get to the axle. And actually, no, I think just the outer portion of the drum has been a while since I did it, my apologies, but if you're doing a drum, it's a little bit different, but you get the idea. This is a five lug swapped uh, Fox body and I've got disc brakes from a 96 GT on it so it's a little different than what you're normally used to seeing but <clears throat> very similar process you remove the, the wheel and then the outside of the drum and then the axle should come out so it's a little easier that way versus this we have to remove the caliper bracket no big deal it's a couple of bolts one on top one on bottom and the caliper will come out of the way and then we'll <clears throat> we'll be able to get to the bracket bolts which are right here and then there's another one on the bottom so we're going to do that, then we'll be able to get the actual axle removed because remember we are going to replace the axle seal and the bearing on the outside of this um, along, with doing the, um, along with doing the clutch the clutches in the track lock. So. Something else. Check our brake pads over in here, really good. And two. There we go. So now our caliper bracket comes off, and your disc comes off. Oh, it's pretty apparent that I have never changed those. And it's not that they're in bad shape. It's just that I want the reassurance. So we're going to change. That's the seal and the bearings on the inside of that. So to get that out, this is where you push in on your axle, and it doesn't move much. You can see it's maybe about three eighths of an inch. But you push that in, and that's where the C-clip and the differential is exposed, and you can pull that out. So we're going to push that axle in. We're pushed in. You know, make sure you can turn your, your diff, and you'll be able to see right in there. That is your C-clip right there. And it's going to come out the other side. So what we can do spin the carrier around 180 degrees so we can get to that C-clip. You can see right there. It's ready to come out. <clears throat> Pull that bad boy out of there. It can be a little stuck. They don't always come out the easiest. So sometimes what I like to do is push on the top and bottom of it so that it gets it pushed out the other side a little bit then it's a little easier to grab there you go this again is nasty stuff and I don't like touching it so there's your C-clip Now that other axle will be able to pull right out the other side and once we get this spring out we'll be able to pull the side gear out which will have our uh, it'll have our clutch packs on it so 
That is the next thing we're going to do. We're going to pull that axle out. You can see the axle's pushed in, and now we're going to pull it out. And I always like to be careful here because you can sometimes get fluid that comes out the end. And I don't want that. So we're going to pull the axle out. Stand it up. So to save time and create less boredom for you, I removed the other C-clip, much like the other side. Um, I have seen instances where they are tough to get out, but uh, it's few and far between. Most times if you push the axle in and rotate it a few times, it'll fall out, but uh, magnet works good. So at any rate, now you can see the spring is what we're after here. So that's that guy right there in the middle. So we're going we're gonna to get him out. Now, it has to come out towards you, it can't go in, but an easier way that I've found to do that is if you turn the diff a little bit like that, then you can get a dead blow hammer, kind of like this, in there, give it a couple of good whacks so that it's sticking out a little bit, turn it around, you can see that that <coughs> spring is ready to come out. Now, the next step is to grab yourself a set of locking pliers. It doesn't really matter what kind as long as they lock. You want to grab the spring. Lock onto it. <coughs> give it a few wiggles and it'll come out. Now there are times when you might have to use a screwdriver or a pry bar to get it out the rest of the way. The main, the main thing I want to caution you with those here is this, this is under extreme tension. So you want to make sure that you don't lose this or pop it out towards your face and then get hit with it. This thing is under a lot of pressure. And there we go, just about out. There it is. So there's our spring. Now for comparison, you can see, <clears throat> for comparison, you can see the side profile of that spring is a lot different than the new one. The new one's a lot thicker. So this is where I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to use the, the new spring that, the new spring that came with it, or if we're going to have to reuse the uh, the old one. So with these gears here, if you spin one side, it'll bring the other side around, and then eventually you'll be able to pull the gear out. Like so. And you can see on the back side of these, see that little disc or bearing cup on the back side? So that <clears throat> has to come with it. So we'll make sure we've got all the pieces. And that other one looks like it came out on the back side already. So we're going to spin the carrier around and snag it. There's that guy, and it's got the cup on the back side also, so we're good there. Let's make sure we marked that that was the bottom. It's also a good time to look at your, your wear pattern, where your teeth have been rubbing on it. <clears throat> Looks pretty good. And then these guys will come right out. And it's going to be messy. We got one side out there. <clears throat> there we go. We got that side out. There is a little uh, disc that those ride on on the inside too. Make sure that comes out with it. 
and pull the other side out. These might seem like they're kind of stuck in there. Uh, the reason for that is that fluid tension. There's that disc. Now, if you were to leave that in there, there would be way too much tension on this, and it wouldn't go back together very easily. So you got to make sure you get that out with it. All right, so now we know that this side is the passenger side. We're going to set it off to the passenger side. And this side is the driver's side. We'll set it off to the driver's side. Here's something interesting. I was looking at the exploded view and how it tells you to assemble this. It is not how mine was assembled. Which is probably why I wasn't getting very much traction. And, and I'm not sure if somebody else did this or what. But uh, it's not how it was. So I'm going to go by the exploded view. So... These ones that came out had the friction disc, two spacers, friction disc, two spacers, and a friction disc. And then this shows spacer, friction disc, spacer, spacer, friction disc, spacer, friction disc, shim. So we're going to go that route instead. And I'm willing to bet the amount of traction I get <laughs> will be far better. than it was before. <clears throat> My assumption is that they want the friction disc to wear on those spacers to act as a flywheel in a real clutch setup. So that's why they want the actual friction discs in between the two clutch discs. And, and those, if you look at them, they're keyed onto this so that they don't move. So my assumptions are that the parts that should spin, which would be these friction discs, should be sandwiched, and that's, that's more than likely why I had to, bad traction. <coughs> but uh, we will see. And now with all of the uh, friction discs and plates reassembled, I'm going to go ahead and put these back in here. Get the other side. There we go. <clears throat> now is putting our gears back in, or the other spider gears, and you want to make sure that these plates are still on there. found that sometimes it's easier to do this when you can turn the carrier this way and you get your, your your top one lined up and you get the bottom one in from underneath here and then it should line right up All right, now I got that lined up. Now it's springtime. This is the spring that came out, and this is the uh, one that came with the kit. I mean, just the, the size of that, yeah, that's not going to fit in my diff. So we're going to have to reuse the uh, factory spring. That's just that's just insane how much bigger that is. Side profile of that guy. So we're gonna reuse this one. I'm gonna compress it a little bit. What we're gonna do this time is put the cross pin where we want it to go, which is gonna be right up here. So that's going to allow that top gear to stay in place, I'm hoping. bind it up on the top of that housing like so and then again let me show you how I did this so with this spring if you compress just one side of it right here 
makes it a lot easier to get it in. So you're going to go like this and use the ground as leverage. Now you'll have to open this up a little bit. Might take you a couple times, but you want to try, you can see the, the gap in there. You want to try to get it to where that's closed all the way and then you know that you've got at least as much help as you can get putting this back in. Alright, try it again. Alright, you can see the gap is there closed on the end. So, now we're going to put this back in. pin bolt out and leave this guy right there for now and hammer that in there we go spring in there. Now we can turn this and we should, if we've got it all lined up right, be able to get it in there. Okay, so the spring, the spring is out a little too far on this side now. So There we go. Get that in there. Perfect. We've got the spring in. We know the cross pin goes in. The cross pin's gonna have to come back out, but just for making sure things don't move, we're gonna go ahead and put it in there just the time being. So now we've got to go do the axle bearing. You can see the seal, and then inside there is the bearing. The seal is relatively easy to come out. You use a seal puller and the, the bearing. I've got a couple of different tools. We're going to try both and we'll see which works better. The kind of seal pullers that I prefer, but uh, they make a bunch of different options. It's just a matter of finding one that you like. <laughs> Holy cow. Never had that happen before. Look at that. I bent my seal puller. This thing has definitely been through some use, but I never thought I'd have that happen. There we go, we did drip a little bit of fluid, no big deal. I usually like to take a look at <clears throat> the inside of the bearing surface and see how it looks. The seal looks like it's in pretty decent shape. But since we're here, we're going to do it. And the bearing surface looks pretty good. You can see the, the surface of, of where the bearing's been riding on looks pretty good too. Now if you had a case where the wear looked really bad or the bearings were really bad, then you're probably either running it with not enough fluid or there's no fluid getting the bearing. We already got the seal out. We're going to use a three jaw internal puller. There's a there's specific ones made just for this, but this should work just fine. Uh, puller isn't the greatest when you you pull against the bearing, so end up uh, screwing that up. But then once you get on the actual uh, bearing, it comes out pretty easy. So yes, sir. <coughs> now it's time to put the new bearing in. Fan putting bearings or seals in dry, so I'm going to throw a little bit of this. Uh, a little bit of this lube on there before I go to town. Just to make sure it goes in there nice. We're going to put a little bit in here. 
We're just going to rub that around the surface. Make sure that it's nice and happy. Also, let's roll a little bit on this guy. And we'll get some more on there once uh, once we get it actually in. But this is just to make sure it goes in a little smoother. The seat your bearing. Now what we're going to use is a bearing, race, and seal driver set. <coughs> so you'll find the appropriate one that sits on the bearing. Here's, here's the dilemma here, and I'll show you. If you use one that's too small and you don't sit on the actual outside surface of the bearing, you'll ruin this cage and the bearings could fall out. If you use one that's too big, you won't be able to drive it in. So we've got this one here, should get us where we need to be. Assembly of the tool is pretty easy. So you've got the handle that goes on it. Go into here, snug that down. Drive her home. And now we do the seal. You can see the bearing seated all the way. That's good. And then I'll put a little bit of a uh, little bit of loop in there, just to make sure the bearing's happy, but also so that the seal will go in easier. Just lube it up a little bit also. All right, so my seal goes right there. Same thing. Make sure you get one that, that doesn't go inside. So if we use this one that went inside here, we damage the seal. You don't want to do that. So we'll pick one that goes over the outside. Fits nice. Put our tool together. Now I bought these ones off Amazon, but you can rent them from uh, like an O'Reilly's if you got one by you. All right, now you want to make sure you start the seal flush. some right here on the seal and on the bearings. Work that in. Make sure the seal's not dry. Make sure the bearing's not dry. <laughs> there we go. Now we do the right, other so side. It is a good example of why you should be thorough with your work, right? So you see that I got the old bearing and race out. Most of you be thinking, yeah, go ahead, put the new bearing in. I'm going to show you why I always double check myself. You see that? So there is a piece of bearing that got knocked out while I was taking the old bearing out. This is a prime example of why you always got to double check yourself. So I always get a magnet anytime I do this and I go in here and do one of these. Make sure I get all the crud out. Anything that shouldn't be there, make sure I get it out. Run the magnet through again. Make sure there's nothing crazy. Good to go. Now we know there's no pieces that are going to get down into your diff and hurt anything. I wish I would have uh, been recording when I did it, but uh, last bearing that I tried to put in, it shattered the case. See all these pieces here? It literally shattered when I tried to uh, put it in. I'm not sure what the heck happened, and then I've still got the, the case in there that's got to come out, so this is going to be fun. <coughs> Cheap bearings in that kit, so I went and got some... Uh, some new ones from National or from Rise or National bearings that are a little bit better. This bearing kit was 30 bucks, so I'm assuming that the uh, 
bearings in it were less than awesome. The bearings I got at the parts store were 20 bucks each. Officially say that was a giant pain in the butt. <clears throat> I was able to get that bearing out, or the you know, I guess it was the holder of it, but I had to modify my puller tool. So these uh, these little teeth were rounded, or these little grippers uh, fingers were rounded too much on the end to grab anything. So I had to uh, give them a little give them a little sharpening with my grinder. But I was able to at least get it out and not screw up the, the seat. So I'm happy about that and I'll just get it cleaned up and get a new bearing in. Fun times. Don't buy cheap bearings. Oh, got that back together finally. Gotta say of all the things I've done in my life that have sucked, that one is definitely up there on the uh, the list of the list of things that I don't ever want to do again. So now that we got that done. <sighs> Now is the time that we can get our um, C-clips back in. So to do that, we've got to take our cross pin retaining bolt out. And remember, this is the old one. We're not going to reuse it. It's just placeholder. And we reach back in here, push our pin out. Save him. All right, so now this is where we push in on the axle. So you push in on the outer axle here. And you can see right in there where we can put our C-clip in. I gotta say, I've met people that can put these in easily. I, I usually struggle a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. There's that one. See, and then the struggle for me is to keep that from falling until the axle comes back up. So usually it's a two-handed operation. Push it in, reach out, and try to get the axle back out. There you go, so then it retains the C-clip. Lovely. Then we'll do the other C-clip. Push it in on the axle. I'm going to definitely get in the light here. Oh, hit the camera. All right, so now we got this one is done. You can see it's in. <clears throat> that one is pushed in. So we'll go ahead and put our C-clip in. Push the axle back out. Perfect. Now all we got to do is drop our cross pin in, and it'll be a happy camper. Oh yeah, there's money. I'm just gonna put this in here for a sec. Gotta go grab the new cross pin. All right. So here's the. The new one and it's got the thread locker on there. So we'll pull that old one out. You'll have to hold the cross pin so it doesn't fall all the way through. Out with the old, in with the new. Lovely. And we'll just crank that in there. It's about 20 to 25 foot pounds. Some say more, some say less, but it's about as much torque as you can get on it with this little wrench. It's general rule of thumb. So I usually get it snugged up in there, take a dead blow hammer, give it a few whacks until the carrier starts turning. Good. All 
All right, so now, now we've got the cross pin in, we've got the bolt in, the springs in, clutch packs are done. The last thing that I like to do, <coughs> last thing that I like to do is get any excess fluid out of the diff. And you can see there's a little bit in there. I don't go overboard trying to get it all out, but uh, I just try to make sure that there's no part uh, particulates or any nasty stuff that's hung up in there and go from there. There we go. That'll do for now. Um, and then the last thing that I'm going to do is clean up this surface here and then I'm going to put, uh, clean it up. Well, I'm going to scrape all the nasty stuff off while keeping this covered and then I'm going to uh, put some new silicone on and get things going. All right, now if I was uh, if I was a certain person that was doing this cleaning job, <clears throat> I would snap my fingers and it would magically clean up the entire rear end and uh, we'd be like 72 hours later into the future after the scrubbing and cleaning that it would require to do that. But uh, I'm not interested. This is my play car and I don't really need <laughs> to paint the underside of it. So I'm going to leave it at that. We've got the gasket surface cleaned up. I'm gonna get some new uh, new silicone. Put a bead around around here. We'll put the new cover on, and we will fill the it parts up. that I bought. Uh, first of all, these bolts that I bought that were supposed to be a rear diff cover bolt kit. Um, they are not the correct ones. The length of them is too long, so. 30 bucks for the rear diff cover bolts that aren't going to get used. Um, the other thing is that the bearings that came with it, one of them shattered when I was putting it in, so that was fun too. Had to go buy another one. Buy quality parts. Alright, so anyways, if those bolts won't work, I've been soaking the old ones in some uh, degreaser and cleaner, so I'll get these ones out and uh, use these. So. We're going to dump the rest of our friction modifier into this. And then I already cleaned everything with a uh, brake parts cleaner, the surface here. <coughs> also on the rear diff, got that taken care of too. And the other thing we're going to do is get the rest of this into here but right now this is too full so we'll wait until after we empty this out and then we'll put that in make it a lot easier to get the friction modifier in and I've got a hose to do so so that'll make it a little bit easier also now we gotta get the gasket maker on this let it tack up and then put it on alright so I've got the uh, silicone on the new cover. I'll let it tack up a little bit. Like I said, I've got both sides of it. I cleaned off with brake cleaner before. Scraped everything off. So now is the moment of truth, so to speak. Put it in place. Bolts back in. Cover is on and now for fluid and we are done. The thing that uh, we got to do is fill the hole or fill the diff with fluid and we're going to fill it until it starts coming out of the, uh, the fill hole here. So I usually put a hose on the bottle and with the car uh, sitting the way it is with the suspension down you're able to snake it through here get it in the fill hole and then pump it through a bit of uh, research and was curious because in the documents it says not to not to reuse the 
friction modifier that you soak the the clutch or the uh, friction discs in. And most times it's hit because that when you soak it, it's supposed to draw out the contaminants from the the friction disc. I don't have any more, so I'm just gonna send it. We're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna reuse that, and we're we'll good to go. So we'll put that friction modifier in, and then. And I'll show you what I did here. So that you saw me soak it in a bag. I'm just going to poke a hole in here, let it drain into here, and then uh, we will use it. All right, so I got a small hole in the corner of the bag. There we go. That is the end of the friction modifier. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, diff fluid in there just to mix it up. The second quart. So we're gonna fill it until it comes out of the, the fill hole. Should be about two of these quarts. All right, so it's coming out of the fill hole. So now we're gonna plug it. <coughs> So my recommendation is always silicone, but if you've got to put it back together and use it right away, silicone is usually not a great idea because it will uh, take time to cure. The silicone doesn't set up immediately and it's got to have cure time. So.